Well, 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 praise the Lord, my friends. I'm happy to be here today. It's going to be a wonderful broadcast. Praise God. Let me know where you are watching from. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. And today I want to talk to you about the anointing to prosper. Prosperity is your portion. And the Lord does not want you to be broke. Amen. He does not want you to be broke. He wants you to be blessed. Of course, the utmost... The utmost uh, reality of the believer is the cross, but it is also ascension and resurrection. It is also walking in dominion, being seated at the throne of God. So uh, today I want to talk to you about the anointing to prosper. Very happy to be here today. Let me know where you are watching from so I can give you some shout outs and say hello God is good. It's a wonderful day. Amen. Let's build up the room and the algorithm. And I want you to comment prosperity. Amen. I want you to comment prosperity. Praise God. And I want you to let me know where you were watching from. Who here knows that prosperity is not a curse. It's actually a natural byproduct of the word of the Lord, of God's presence. So prosperity is the portion of every saint. And prosperity is really more than financial prosperity, though that is a part of it. And we're going to talk about that today. So I pray today that as you connect with me in this breakthrough broadcast, that you would experience the realm of God's presence, the realm of his glory, that things will shift in your life in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people say amen. Continue to give us some hearts and likes. So let me know where you're watching from. It's one of your favorite prophetic voices, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. Happy May. It's going to be an exciting month. Amen. Very happy to be here in the studio today. And the next few hours, I'm going to be driving up. Four or five hour drive to Santa Maria, Central Coast, California. Praise the Lord. It's going to be awesome. So let me know where you're watching from. Amen. Alex, you are an Oxnard. That's kind of close to where we're going to be. Come up this weekend. Amen. Thank you. Dana, good to see you. Now, DC. I just saw you, D. Cayetta Neto. I was just thinking about you and praying for you right before the beginning of this broadcast. I was thinking the same thing. I said, I have not seen DC in a while, and I'm praying for you. Amen. Hello from South Africa, my South Africa family. Christine Leonard, God bless you. From Connecticut, God bless you. Netherlands, Shalom Juan Martinez, God bless. Sandromt Egan, Prophet Luis, miss you guys, love you. Colleen Julies, amen. Happy birthday month. Dana Elizabeth, Kimberly Amsterdam, Maggie K, Yakwe, love you guys. Brian Nichols, Ellen Pierce, amen. Alex Array Rivera. Percy Eroha Awa. We got Hyderabad in the end of the house. Sharing Goliath. Amen. Kaki Cindy Gina. Salem, Oregon. Blessings. Yahweh as well. Yes. Africa, Zambia. Beautiful. Margaret Blakely from New Jersey. From the Philippines. Jerome Ba Lilo. God bless you. I love the Philippines. Can't wait to go back there. From South Africa, Amy Peterson, Tracy Pillay, God bless, God bless. Auckland, New Zealand, Lord willing, I will be in Auckland later this year, the month of August. So be, be in the lookout for that. South Africa, Dallas, Texas, Maurice Cole, God bless you. I'm going to be ministering in Dallas end of this month in May. 
May 24, 5, and 6. So we'd love to meet you and see you. Amen. Michelle from Dallas. We got Texas family strong here. God bless. Like I said, I will be back in Dallas, Texas, May 24th to the 6th. Water from India. God bless you. Hi, Susan. Bless you. Love you. Our good friend, Minister Natasha, and I were talking briefly about you the other day. Zambia in the house. What about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going to, you're from Lompokai. Yeah, we're going to be in Santa Maria area tomorrow. Amen. Jersey, what's up, D? God bless. Kenya, woo, 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 jumbo. Can't wait to be in Kenya. I'll be back in Kenya in the month of October. Hallelujah. South Africa, prosperity more. I miss my South African friends and family. I wish I could visit South Africa this year, but it's just not happening right now. See you in August. Thank you. Denise, where will I see you in August, my friend? Michelle Jackson Ministries, amen. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Glory be to God. Prayers, Regina Holder. Amen. In Jesus' name. Well, lift up your hands. Father, thank you for every single person that is connected to this live broadcast. Hey, Arizona, love and miss you guys. Arizona, I need to come back to AZ soon. Father, thank you for the fire of God. And I declare now that the realm, the anointing of prosperity will manifest and come forth in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people say, amen and amen. Amen. Well, people of God, I want to talk to you today about the anointing to prosper. Hi, Zareen, Malaysia in the house, Connecticut in the house. I want to talk to you about the anointing to prosper. Once again, uh, I believe there is an anointing of prosperity, but it's not only for a select few. It's for everybody. I want to say it's for me. There is biblical prosperity, and then there is a false prosperity. And then, of course, we understand. What's up, Prophet Adrian? Love you. Mucho abrazo. We understand that there has been a false prosperity message where it's been hyper-sensationalized, sensationalized, hyper-emotionally hyper manipulated. And there has been a twisting of the scriptures, absolutely. But we understand that prosperity is God's inheritance. It's God's promise for you, and it's listed all throughout the scriptures. And I know there's many people that will say, well, Dr. Ben, what about the verses of suffering? What about the verses of carrying the cross? What about the verses that, you know, Jesus, uh, he quoted in the Gospels, the foxes have holes and the birds have the nest of the air, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Friends, you need to understand the context of those scriptures. And unfortunately, we have thrown out the baby with the bathwater. And we have condemned the realm, the message of prosperity. And we have demonized prosperity. Do you know what the real demon is? The real demon is poverty. The real demon is greed. The real demon is also manipulation of a false prosperity. Amen. But there is a true anointing of prosperity. It's a biblical promise is a biblical mandate in fact i want to say this boldly and loud and clear you cannot be filled with the spirit and lack you cannot lack even financially or be in poverty and be filled with the spirit it's an oxymoron now i know that many people are struggling it's a fallen world 100 percent but that is not your reality. Your reality is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Your reality is on earth as it is in heaven. Your reality is that everything that Jesus shed his blood for, paid the price for. That reality is that you would prosper in all things. Can I get an amen? Your circumstances do not equate biblical truth. So stop trying to interpret the Bible, the Word of God, according to your lens or your circumstances. And unfortunately, way too many people interpret the Bible through their own preference, their own theological nuance, their own circumstance. My friends, you may be struggling right now, but that is not the end of your life. You may be struggling right now, but that is not the end of God's word. You may be struggling right now, but that does not mean that this is going to last forever. Can I get an amen? There is an anointing for prosperity. There's a biblical prosperity, and prosperity is your portion. 
Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say preach Dr. Beth. Now today I want to talk about biblical prosperity, the anointing to prosper. Amen. And we're going to go into some scriptures. But I felt to talk to you about this today because we're all on a journey. I want to say journey. We're all on a journey. Listen, listen, guys. Some of us, we have made bad mistakes. I've made mistakes. I have made bad spending habit mistakes. I've been unwise, or maybe I've had too much faith in a false hope where it's had consequences uh, to my journey. And I am talking financially as of now, but I'm not only talking financially. Can I get an amen? Because prosperity is not just finances. The believer who thinks that prosperity is only limited or confined to finances, the believer who confines that biblical truth is heretical. You're, 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 you're in heresy. Prosperity is for all things and all realms. Amen. And the Lord wants you to prosper in all things. Somebody say hallelujah. So today we're going to talk about the anointing to prosper. And I want you to say amen and help build up the room. Give us some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall. Because one of your favorite prophetic voices, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, is in the house. And I want to talk to you today because poverty is a curse. Spiritual poverty, financial poverty, emotional poverty, biblical poverty, biblical illiteracy. It's all a curse. God wants you to prosper. And especially when the economy of the world, the markets, the, the uh, S&P 500, especially when, hallelujah, there's so much Bidenomics and there's su such a manipulation to actually destroy people, to destroy God's people. There's so much going on on planet Earth right now. And the oligarchs, the 1%, the One World Order, the elitists, the Illuminati, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, these massive cabal companies do not want you to prosper. They want you to be broke as a joke. They want you to be begging and pleading. They want you to be worried and stressed. They want you to be in debt. They want you to die in debt. You know, I lived in India for three months. And I lived in India for three months. And there were so many cases of people committing suicide because of financial debt. Now, debt, D-E-B-T, equals death. Now, I know in the economic world, people say, you know, there's good debt and there's bad debt. I believe in that. Because you can use debt to make money. You can use debt for your advantage. Amen. However, mismanaging these tools can cause you to fall into a rut and to be stuck and equals death. But I want to pray today that God is going to break off any lack, any poverty, any mismanagement, any mental lies. Amen. Reba Soka, that the Lord will break it up because he already did at the cross. What is salvation, friends? Now, people are so fickle-minded. Their minds are so fickle and thick-headed, stubborn. What is salvation? The salvation package is not just from sins and from hell. It is also from all sickness and disease, and salvation is from all poverty. God paid the price. He who knew no sin became sin so that we might become his righteousness. He became poor so that you and I may become rich. The Bible says that God will abundantly supply all of your needs according to his glorious riches. So we need to get out of this mindset of, oh, salvation is only about repent. Repent, repent, repent. This little witch came up to me in uh, Miami on Thursday night, and I was so livid, I was so mad, this religious spirit. This little lady came and, and tried to correct me and teach me. Excuse me, the devil is a liar. 
I'm, I'm the invited minister in this church, in this house. You are a random guest. Don't be coming up to me trying to teach me or correct me. And his little lady said, why are you not preaching about sin and repentance from sin? And I said, listen, lady, we do. Just because you're not hearing it in this one hour session does not mean we preach that. But people are so fickle minded that they only focus on the gospel of a salvation message according to their mind. Salvation is not just from sins and hell, but it's also from sickness and poverty. Can somebody say amen? It's really the gospel of the kingdom. And I believe that the Lord is releasing an anointing to prosper in all things. So if you're ready to receive today and go into the word, I want you to say amen. Continue to give some hearts and likes, build the room, because I'm going to teach you and break some things down today. Somebody say hallelujah. Now, first and foremost, we know this passage. 3 John 1, 2. Beloved, I pray that all will may go well with you. All. I want to say all. I pray that all will go well with you and that you will be in good health as it is with your soul as it goes well with your soul. Now, some translations, of course, say, I pray that you will prosper in all things. Wellness, wholeness equals prosperity. I pray that you will prosper in all things and be in good health as you prosper in your soul. Somebody say amen. Now, I've taught on this many times, but we need soul prosperity before we have financial prosperity. God wants you to prosper in all things. I want you to say all things. He wants you to prosper in all things. And he wants you to be in good health as you prosper in your soul. Now that word well with you or prosper in the Greek, it is you do. I want to say you do. It is you do. And what this Greek word prosper or go well with you, you do, what that means is I've pinned it to the top here. It means to have a prosperous journey. I want you to say this. I will have a prosperous journey. I want you to say my family will have a prosperous journey. The Apostle John is writing in this epistle, I pray that you will prosper in all things as you journey with God in your relationship with Jesus. Who here knows it's a journey. We go from glory to glory. We go from level to level, faith to faith, breakthrough to breakthrough, realm to realm. So prosperity is a journey. It's not a one-time happenstance event. It's a journey. And I want you to think about this. As you're hiking or climbing up a mountain on this journey, on this hiking trail, you continue to elevate and increase, build up your stamina, your strength, your momentum, and you continue to elevate. It's a journey. Prosperity is a journey. So this word, well with you, prosperity, in Greek, it means you do, to have a prosperous journey. It also means have a happy journey. Amen. I want to say I am prospering in all things. So it's a journey. May you prosper in your health, in your relationships, in your finances, in your mind. Now, I love this passage because the Bible says, I pray that you will prosper in all things and will be in good health as you prosper in your soul. So to me, the prerequisite of true prosperity is soul prosperity, mind, will, and emotions. As your mind prospers, as your emotions prosper, then, hear me, you will prosper in all things, which will also affect your health. Now, health is wealth, my friends. Health is wealth. I'm probably the most healthiest, most healthiest I've been in a while. Physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, relationally. I'm the most prosperous, happy, healthy, whole that I've been in a while. And the intermittent fasting, the supplements I take in the morning, the exercises, the different things I've shifted in my life has caused me and my health, my body physically to be healthier and stronger than ever before. Somebody say amen. But too many people, maybe they get blessed financially, but their mind is still bound. 
their emotions are still bound. Can I say this, friends? If your emotions, your soul, is enslaved, then most likely you will never prosper financially. Because the devil wants to keep you bound, stuck, enslaved, in trauma, in turmoil, in offense. So therefore, you are not able to think clearly. You are not able to feel it abasata. You're not able to experience the Lord clearly to fully walk out in your obedience and in your call. How many of you, you've gone through traumas and dramas. You've gone through a divorce, gone through a breakdown, a breakup. You've gone through some experiences and you're still stuck in the past. Therefore, you're not able to be released to prosper in your journey. You're still carrying baggage. You're still carrying baggage. And because your soul is dampened and dampered, you're not able to fully make the most of every opportunity because we know the days are evil. Somebody say amen. So God wants to heal, prosper your soul. As your soul prospers, that creative realm of love, joy, the economy of heaven begins to bubble up. Faith begins to bubble up. And then you're able to move into obedience, destiny, the gifts of God properly instead of self-sabotaging and shipwrecking, car wrecking your faith and destiny. Somebody say amen. If I'm talking to you, I want to say amen. So prosperity is a journey. And we as believers, we need to first and foremost have prosperity in our soul. And because too many believers are damaged, you have made the wrong financial choices. I'm not a financial expert. I'm not a financial guru at all, okay? I'm just saying. These are the facts, all right? Too many of us have wasteful spending, immoral spending. Because your soul is damaged, Therefore, it affects your business, it affects your relationships, it affects, somebody say amen, Rebbe, it affects the outcome, fruits of your life. Stop blaming God and the devil and the economy and the media. Stop being a victim. Be quiet. Break it off of you. Shut the flesh up. And you need to grow up and you need to manage your soul, your heart. So that you will not be stuck on a path, but bam, you're able to obey God clearly and fully. Somebody say amen. Now let's go to another verse here. Psalm 128, verse 1 to 2. Blessed are all those who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. Amen. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. I want you to say blessing and prosperity is mine. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Now, this is very interesting because there are many attacks against our fruit. Many attacks. But once again, it's not about the fruit. It's about the root. And the root has to do with your soul. How deep can you go? How deep is your relationship with God? So... The fruit gets attacked by locusts, grasshoppers, the things of the world. But as long as your root system and the soil of your heart, amen, is rooted in God's word, then you will continue to prosper. Now, I want to pray that every locust attack against your, the fruit of your labor will be dismantled, destroyed, diminished by the fire of God. Somebody say fire. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessing and prosperity will be yours. That's the Bible. That's the word of God. Let's go to another verse here. Proverbs 16, 3. I love this. If you're receiving today, say amen. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will succeed. Now, I'm getting a word of, I guess, knowledge or wisdom here. Let's go over to that verse in the interlinear, in the lexicon, what is that word succeed in the Hebrew? What is that word in the Hebrew? So let's go here. Amen. Rebe sokoramandis karabrata. Thank you, Jesus. All right, it's Proverbs 16.3. 
let's go here into the interlinear. We have to study the exact word of what God means. Amen. So actually, in the Hebrew, it means to be established. That word succeed means to be established. All right? That word succeed in the Hebrew is kun, K-U-N. And it means to be established. It means to be firm. Amen. It means to be strengthened, to be established, and to be firm. It means to be set up and to be fixed. Stable, secure, and enduring. Somebody say amen. My gosh, my gosh. I feel the Lord. So when you commit your way to God, you'll be secure, firm, established, and you will succeed. Now let's go to another verse here. Joshua 1 8. Thanks for all the love and the hearts and lights. Continue to build up the room because the man of God is teaching here today. Amen. Now let's go to Joshua 1 8. And now I'm going to go to the Hebrew lexicon here as well. Praise God. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you will be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. Wow. You will make your way prosperous. You, if you meditate and have God's word in your mouth day and night, night and day, and you do all that is according to it, then you will make your way prosperous. And then you'll have good success. Amen and amen. You will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Now let's go first to that word prosperous. My gosh. In the Hebrew, that word prosperous is salak. Okay, I want you to say salak. And that word prosperous, salak, in that verse means to rush. It means to rush. It means to make prosperous bring successful to an issue now let's go to that word success now it's actually the same root word sakal salak and that word success in the hebrew means to be prudent it means to have insight it means to have comprehension very interesting so according to this verse success means to be prude it means to comprehend. Somebody say amen. True success is to be able to comprehend, to be prude, to be wise. Somebody say wisdom. Now, once again, my friends, the Lord wants you to prosper. There's an anointing to prosperity. But it's for everybody. It's not only for a select few. Have you ever realized why do the rich get richer? And why do the poor get poor? Because they have not yet utilized God's principles or these tools in their life. God wants you to prosper in all things. First John. Amen. We read that earlier. First John. Praise God. Third John, excuse me. One, two. He wants you to prosper in all things. I want to say all things. Now, remember, there is a false prosperity message out there. There is a manipulated version of prosperity. Hear me now. You cannot just sow your way into prosperity. You must sow, but you must also act. All right. You must sow, but you must also obey. You must sow, but you must also be proactive. Okay. Sowing is like putting the seed in the ground. But still, you must work the ground, water the ground, till the ground, and you must work it to a harvest. This month in May, it's the month of Pentecost harvest. God is releasing mega harvest for you. If you believe that, say amen. Now, I want to talk to you about five realms of prosperity. Five realms of prosperity. Are you with me today? Are you ready? I want to talk to you about five realms of prosperity. Amen. Number one, absolutely, it is your health. Health is wealth. Physical health. God promises none of the diseases he put on the Egyptians will come near you. Know your tents. 
So health is wealth. Friends, we need to take care of our temple. Let me say this. Now, this is going to offend some people, but please know my heart. We preach against homosexuality. We preach against adultery, uh, fornication. But what about gluttony? We need to take care of the temple of God. And let me tell you, most successful people in the eyes of, especially in the terms of the world, most successful people are not lazy, they're not slothful, slothful, they're not obese. Most successful people have their health in check and in order. Why? Because it's all a part of it. It's all connected. You will never see a successful person that is unhealthy physically, that has eating disorders, bad eating habits. Now, listen, friends, I know things happen, okay? And I know that maybe you have baby weight from being pregnant. You, you had an accident. You had an injury to your body. I know. But stop the excuse. Boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. All right, learn to fast. Do a Daniel fast. Amen. Put the plate away and pray. Your body is a holy temple. And let me just say this. Can you imagine an obese Jesus in the days of the Gospels? Can you imagine a gluttonous Jesus? Yeah, wine and dine. Come on. He's a God of celebration and feasting, 100%. But can you imagine a wine bibber? And, and they did call Jesus a wine bibber, actually. But can you imagine... Wine bibber and gluttonous Jesus. We need to be aware. We need to be an example. So health is wealth. There's no use for you to be financially successful or even spiritually successful while your body, your temple, your health is dying, decaying, and is not being stewarded properly. No use. No use. You have the fountain of life. You have the fountain of youth. We must take care of this holy temple. So I'm going to say amen. Health is wealth. And let me tell you, friends, the devil is killing many believers today by getting them to overeat, getting them to be unhealthy. Oh, my gosh. Can I, can I just preach her? Can I just preach her, people of God? I'm just going to preach here. It brings God no glory for a believer to be going in and out of the hospital. It brings God no Now, I know things happen. But where's the faith? Where's the Bible? Where's the working of the Word? It brings God no glory for somebody to be preaching faith and miracles, but you're a 600-pound preacher. You are obese. You're not taking care. To me, that's an oxymoron, and that's an hypocritical. I know we're all on a journey. We are all, we all have things going on. But we as believers, we need to be fit and strong, whole and ready for the end times. We need to be fit and strong, whole and ready. How many of God's generals died early because they did not have true, proper self self care, and because they did not take care of their health and body. There's too many preachers dying. Too many people dying. This love yourself, love your body is a lie from the pit of hell. You and I, we need to be fit, strong, and ready. Why? Because you're not a civilian. You are in the army of God. Lift, right, lift. If you are in the army of God, you need to be strong, fit, and healthy because you have a great calling, my friends. Listen. Harabasaka. There's way too many preachers, and I'm talking to all right, somebody here today. There's way too many preachers. They get knocked out and burned out because they're preaching. Friends, where's your stamina? My gosh. I can do what I do right now and still be overflowing and full because I'm taking care of my body. I'm taking care of my my temple. I can preach longer. I can prophesy further. I can do more. Amen. 
Araba. And that even comes to sleep. Beloved, do you not know that he gives sleep rest to those he loves? Come on, intercessors. Stop freaking out. Stop getting all emotional in your hormones. If you choose to eat the right things, maybe protein, calcium, magnesium, iron, etc. If you prioritize, then maybe you'll have good sleep, which will shift your hormonal balance, which will shift your health. He gives sleep. Sleep is a blessing. It's not a curse. Sleep is one of the greatest medicines. Sleep, sun, exercise, good food, prayer, no stress. Sleep is one of the most ancient blessings of God. Somebody said, preach, Dr. Ben. And the reason why too many intercessors are interstressors is because they don't sleep. They're not having good deep sleep. Sleep is one of the best medicines and is one of the best cures. Amen. I'm preaching so good right now. So prosperity, number one, your health, my friends, your physical health. Your physical health. Jesus paid the price at the cross. So why are you not doing your part? Come on. He does not want a rinky-dink pinto. He does not want a rinky-dink, broken down, bashed, bruised up vehicle. He wants you to be pristine, strong, Daniel anointing, shining and glowing with the glory of God. It's not an age thing. It's a spiritual thing. Your health is spiritual. I remember years ago, I lived in Singapore. And at that time, I had a very strict, disciplined study life, prayer life. It was, it was actually religious, but God still used it. And I would not sleep. I would only sleep maybe like three, four hours. I would sleep late, meditating, doing quiet time, reading, praying. Oh, Rabasa. And I would wake up early. I would challenge myself. And I remember, you know, in the daytime, I was kind of burnt out, not functioning as well. And I remember one of the leaders said, Ben, sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is sleep. Take a nap. Jesus took a nap on the boat. All right. My gosh. Number two, the second realm of prosperity is actually your inner man. Your inner man. Somebody say hallelujah. Now, we just tackled first realm of prosperity is your physical health. Second realm of prosperity is your inner man. Your mind, soul, and spirit. It's clarity, joy, peace. Do you have peace? Do you have joy? Are you able to think straight? Are you able to think right? Friends, I want to challenge you. Let's bring back quiet times. Let's bring back meditational times. All right? Shut your phone off. Shut everything off. Araba, take a walk in the park. Open your journal. Open your Bible and just pray. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. It's your secret place. It's your foundation. And I guarantee you, you'll be more sound, more clear, more happy, more joyful. It's your inner man. It's your inner life. And too many people are stressed out. You sleep stress. You wake up stress. You sleep stress, so you don't even have good sleep. Then you wake up stress and bother. You need to sleep in the glory. Lay it all down at his feet. You worrying about it is not going to do anything. In fact, the book of Ecclesiastes says, in vain you wake up early, in vain you sleep late at night. In vain. It's vain, people of God. You need to prioritize prosperity in your soul, in your inner man. If it's not bringing you joy, cut it off. If it's bringing you stress, cut it off. Somebody say amen. My gosh, lift up your hands. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray, Holy Ghost, that you will give your people a reset. I declare May is a month of reset. Of course, May is the fifth month of the year, so grace, grace, but God pours out His grace to reset.
in Jesus' name. Your inner man, mind, soul, spirit. Hallelujah. True prosperity is having a sound mind. True prosperity is having a clean conscience. True prosperity is having a happy heart. A strong happy heart. All right. The third realm of prosperity. It is your relationships. My gosh, truly your network is your net worth. And I'm so grateful. I could cry right now. I'm so grateful for all the incredible people God has put in my life and surrounded me with. Listen, there's a lot of phony balonies, a lot of fakes, a lot of people who have betrayed and left. And I'm not perfect neither. But one of my core values and principles is honor and is building relationships. Because the kingdom moves at the speed of relationships. You are one breakthrough, or how about this? You're one relationship away from your breakthrough. And I'm so grateful for all the incredible people God has surrounded me with. Every week as I travel, I keep meeting some of the most incredible people on planet Earth. They may not be famous on a mainstream. They may not be some famous prophet or social media influencer, but they love God. Uh, and they have a testimony before the Lord. Hallelujah, Rebbe, and I'm so grateful. Listen, we have way too many spiritual people while they negate being an actual human being. You're also human. It's not a curse to be human. Jesus, come on, died as a human. He rose as a human, and he's seated on the throne as a human. Yes, born again, new nature human being but he's still human amen that's why when he rose again he said touch my hands thomas i'm real feel me touch me i still have the scars amen i still have the scars but i'm a new creation hallelujah somebody say hallelujah we have cursed and hear me now, there's two types of souls, right? There's being soulish, and then there's having a soul. Two different realms. We have cursed the soul when you will actually go to heaven and still have a soul. Amen. But we have cursed the soul, and we said, Oh, baby, I want the bathwater. You're being soulish. You need to be spiritual. Blah, 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 blah. But friends, you have a soul. Amen. I'm preaching so good today. God is good. Your relationships. Your relationships. Hear me now. I want to say one more thing and then we're going to move on to number four. Amen. Or, yeah, what is that, number four? We're going to move on to number four. Um, hallelujah. If you and I are part of the body of Christ, then if you do not have good relationships, then that means you're missing out on the flow of the blood. The flow of the blood. You cannot be disconnected from, if you're a finger, you cannot be disconnected from the wrist, from the forearm, to the upper arm, to your shoulder. You must be connected to thrive. You must be connected to live. You, because in the body, that's where the blood flows. That's where the grace flows. In the body, the body ministry, that's where the sustenance of the Lord manifests. So your relationships actually determine your future. Your relationships determine the fullness of your life. Love God. And love yourself. Love God and your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus. Jesus. Some of you are not prospering because you have the wrong people in your life. And how do you have the right people in your life? Prioritize your health. Get your heart, your mind well. And you will attract who you are and what you have on the inside. 
Some of you are mad, angry, and bitter because you're like, where's, where's the kingdom connection? Where's the kingdom relationships? Well, are you one? Daughter, son, child of God, are you one? Or do you keep rejecting them and you call it toxic masculinity or toxicity, narcissist, narcissist, everyone's a Jezebel to you. Get delivered from your self-centeredness and from that witchcraft. Hallelujah. Yes, there are Jezebel spirits. Yes, there are narcissists. Yes, there are manipulators, liars, 100%. But you cannot, hallelujah, you cannot complain to God and say, nobody likes me. Well, do you even like yourself? Maybe nobody likes being around you because you don't even like you. Who you are on the inside will always attract what's going on all around you. Somebody say amen. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Bam. In this social media world of friend, unfriend, blog, delete, stop it. Stop cutting off the other parts of the body. My, my, my. Number four, the fourth realm of prosperity. Are you enjoying this today? The fourth realm of prosperity is your projects. Everything you put your hand to will be blessed, will prosper. Commit your way to the Lord. It will cause you to succeed. Meditate on God's word day and night, and you will, cause, you will make your way prosperous, and you will succeed. You see, it's all interrelated it can't, it's inseparable, it's all connected, it all flows. Hallelujah. The fourth realm of prosperity are your projects, your businesses. Friends, I was working out this morning and I just got, boom, a new, bit, a new book idea. Pray for me because I'm going on a week-long vacation this coming week. I'm so excited. Rip. Mm -mm -mm. I'm so excited. Bam, bam, bam. I'm going to have a, a deep vacay. Go away with God. So excited about that. <laughs> well overdue and well deserved. Amen. And I don't care what any religious dummy will try to say and criticize and judge. The Lord rebuke you. But um, I believe this coming week, I'm going to finish my book, which we're talking with a mainline traditional publisher about this book. So this week, I'm, I'm most likely going to finish my first raw, rough edit of my book. I got another book idea, which I need to start working on. And today, I just got a new book idea. Someone say amen. In fact, probably in the next month or two, I want to do a master course on birthing books. So if you're interested on that, say amen. I'm going to do a master class on birthing books. Because God has taught me, I've, I've written many books. I've only published two, but I've written many books. Okay. But anyways, this morning as I was exercising, working out, the Lord gave me another book idea. Whatever, when, when you prosper in your soul, in your heart, your mind, when you prosper in your relationship, things are moving. Momentum, breakthrough, synergy. Then things begin to accelerate and take speed. Then everything you put your mind to, your hands to, bam, begins to prosper. Your projects, your business, the things that you commit yourself to, it will prosper in Jesus' name. But you must first prosper in faith, Peace, love, joy in your heart and your mind. Amen. And, and the realm of prosperity, the realm of success, uh, is more than financial. It is financial, but it's more than financial. People think prosperity is only financial. Friends, if you prosper in your projects, in your missions, in your doing, then you will actually be able to employ others and give financial prosperity to others. You will actually be able to be a greater blessing to others. Amen. I pray that you will prosper in all things, even as your soul prospers. 
my, my, my. God wants you to have a legacy. God wants you to build something that will feed and bless the nations. It's bigger than you. That vision, that dream, it's bigger than you. It has to deal with nations. I want you to write this. My dream is connected to nations. My destiny is connected to generations. I'm dropping some bomb one-liners here. Your dream is connected to generations. It's bigger than you. And number five, the fifth realm of prosperity, praise God, is God's presence. Of course, the ability to pray, it's spiritual. But it's his favor. It's the favor of God. People look at my life and they see favor. Listen, the Bible says, Luke 2.52, one of my favorite passages. Jesus grew in favor with God and with man. Jesus grew in favor with God and with man. You may have favor with God, but you have favor with man. Amen. And the presence of God is what causes us to prosper. It's what causes us to be healed, delivered, whole, sane, sound. It's what causes our soul to come and be alive. It's what causes our relationships to flourish. It's the oil on the hinges. It's the oil upon our lives. And we need God's presence. We need that realm of prosperity, which is God's presence. If, his, if he's pleased with you, nothing will be impossible. If God is pleased with you, nothing will be impossible. Somebody say amen. Now, the pleasure of God has to do more. more it's more than faith. The Bible says, the Bible says, the one who has faith in God pleases the Lord. So pleasure, God's pleasure, favor on your life is a byproduct of your faith. When you have faith and when you are faithful, then that favor, that pleasure, that presence is evident on your life. Amen. Jesus, friends, people of God, his presence is everything. His nearness is everything. Holy Spirit is a secret sauce. We need the presence of God. And yeah, you might say, Dr. Man, of course God's with me. Of course God's everywhere. But is his manifest, concentrated, poured out spirit presence in your life? Praise the Lord. Excuse me. Bam, bam. You might see me cracking my neck often. I gotta do what I gotta do. And many times when I sit and preach, Actually, it loosens up my neck and my body. So praise God for that. <laughs> but let me tell you, friends, the Lord wants to lather, wants to pour out his presence on your life. And when he's with you, Moses said, we will not go forward unless you go. Because what's going to cause us to be different? It's not just principles, it's presence. It's not just law. It's love. It's not religion. It's relationship. It's not just tell me what to do. It's God is with me. And when God is with you, doors will open. Things will happen. Things will take off. True prosperity is having an intimate relationship with the Holy Ghost, with Jesus Christ. A true, true prosperity is being one with God, being one with the Lord. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this teaching today. There's an anointing to prosper. And it doesn't matter what you're experiencing, warfare, circumstance, nonsense, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter what's going around you. You are not a victim and you will not settle for less. Prosperity is biblical. Prosperity is your portion, Jesus paid the price for it. Amen. He wants you to be a blessing to the nations, to generations. He wants you to be able to give more, do more than ever before. To be so effective. To be so fulfilled. To make the most of every opportunity. He wants you to be fruitful in all things. Prosper in all things. Amen. 
I want to say my health is prosper. Remember, prosperity in Greek means you do a journey. So on this journey of life, may you continue to increase and grow and go to the next level. Amen. Hey, may your health prosper. May your soul, your inner man prosper. May your relationships prosper. May your projects, your doings, may your dreams and visions prosper. And may the presence of God be so rich and evident in your life. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. I want to pray with you here today. Amen. But as I pray, I want you to say prosperity is my portion. My, my, my. Biblical prosperity is your portion. Biblical prosperity. He does not want you to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Being down, bruised. No, he paid the price, my friends. He paid the price. Somebody say hallelujah. I want to pray with you. And I want to pray over you. And you, this lady, Vanessa Azar, can you pray for my husband? Eye restoration. Vanessa, I want you to put your hand on that eye, whether it's left or right or if it's both. Father, I come in agreement. Touch and heal his eye. In the name of Jesus, I declare new cornea, new creative, heal, create right now, new eye, no damage in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, somebody say amen. I want you to give the Lord a mighty clap. Give us some hearts and likes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, people of God, once again, I'm going to drive up to Santa Maria in a few hours. We have a great conference this weekend with Steve Swanson. We'd love to see you there in person. If you're not able to come and join us in person, I want you to watch the YouTube. We're going to be live on YouTube every session. It is 100% free. All right. We usually uh, do not have full-on free conferences. Amen. I don't know why it's doing that. But uh, make sure you join us live if you're not able to come in person. Get in the glory in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Thanks for watching. If you, what am I doing in July? In July, I'm going to be in India. And from India, I go over to, actually in July, I'm going to be in Hawaii with Pastor Suzanne Hen. Then I'm going to be in Vancouver, Canada. Then I'm going to India. And then from India, I'm going to go to Singapore and Indonesia. So July... July is where I begin my international travels. It's going to be a big second half of the year. Amen. But I would love to see you. Make sure you join YouTube as we go live with anointed worship with the one and only Steve Swanson. Powerful preaching, word, demonstration of the miracles of the glory of God. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, give it a like, give it a share. Consider following this page. And consider becoming... A monthly partner with me and this ministry, Benlin Ministries. As we are soul winning, evangelizing, apostolic, prophetic ministry from social media and in person all around the world. I love you all. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. See you soon. If this blessed you, make sure you share. God bless.